Welcome to this instructional video on the Mad Pony 2 bag plugin for ZBrush version 1.1. In this video, we're going to talk about the updated functionality on the positioning tab and also talk about the new settings tab. If you need information about the geometry and the undo tab, please refer to the video instructions version 1.0. When you open up ZBrush, the tool bag will have its startup settings, just like this. Using the settings tab, you can use the save defaults and load defaults. For example, let's say I want my defaults to have geometry tab open and have art selected. And this can, can go for any tab in any option. I can press save defaults. And if I leave this as it is, and I press load defaults, it will open the tabs that were open when I saved the defaults and it selects the options that I left selected. These two options can be quite useful for when you start a new project and you want some defaults to be set up. You also have save file and load file. These two options are meant for when you're working on a project and you already set some undo positions for your project or for example you have set an alignment driver you want to come back to that alignment driver for example and so let's say you're working on a project you press save file and you save a file in the same place where that project was saved and then when you come back at that project you only have to press load file load that file and all the settings for that file will be loaded and ready to go from where you left off now let's look at the positioning tab and see what changes have been made as you can see the positioning tab now has four different tabs within it let's start with the align tab the Align tab has uh, the same options as the previous version, with some more uh, options included. I should also address that the previous version had a bug when using visible subtools, and that has been fixed. Now on this version, if you select a subtool, and I'm pressing Alt and clicking, and you press Set Alignment Driver, you get a new switch down here that tells you the name of the alignment driver. So this way you can easily know which subtool is set as the alignment driver. And when you're using settings and saving a setting, these will be saved with the settings. So when you come back, these will still show you the current alignment driver. So it's an easy way to know which subtool is your alignment driver. You also now have a undo button for the alignment operations. So for example, if I align, I press, so this is, this is my alignment driver at the moment. And if I align all my tools, for example, to the posit to the Y here, to the edge, by selecting visible, and I'll I'll leave this one of them not visible, so we can see what's going to happen. And I align all the visible tools to the top of that alignment driver. All the visible tools have been aligned. That one is still in its place and they're all being aligned to the alignment driver which is actually, actually this cone here now if I immediately after that I press undo they all go back to their original position now this undo button is, is meant to undo an alignment operation if for example you do an alignment operation and then you go into something else it will create new undos in your undo history and when you press undo it will have unexpected results so this undo button is just if you do an alignment and you're not happy with that alignment then you come here and you do undo it works also for all and also selected but this if you do it for a selected it's just a normal undo it's just one undo now this undo functionality was also introduced for the nudge so when you use nudge you'll have the same functionality down here so as you can see the nudging also has the undo functionality now let's look at views before we get to nudge. Now views was updated. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to open up my draw tab and I'm going to come down here and look at the floor. Right now on my floor, I only have Y on, Z and X is off. And I want to talk about this because of this new button called view all grids. When I have just, let's say my, I only have the bottom, the top, the floor grid on. If I press view all grids, all the three grids will be on the X, Y, and Z grid. And view all grids will be turned on every time I select the view. 
The new functionality for the Views tab is that when you press, for example, the top view or any other view, view all grids will be turned on. You can turn it off after that, but it will be turned on. So a new button has been introduced as well called Subtool Focus. In most cases, you won't need Subtool Focus. Uh, if I select the tool and go to top view, it will select that tool immediately, left, front. But this Subtool Focus is because in the Transform tab, you might use this Frame option. What happens when you use the Frame option is that it will offset these options. So if you do use the frame option, you can select subtool focus here and it will make sure that we always focus on the subtool. It will, however, take longer because it has, it has to go to all the subtools, make the, the visible subtools invisible and then visible again. So it takes a while when you use this option, but this will make sure that you always focus on the subtool. You also have a new slider here. It's the zoom slider. So if I press front again, you can see that it gives me that certain zoom. So I can zoom in on the, for how much I want on that object. Now let's look at these two options, snap and center, and this controls the grid. So if I have snap turned off, my grid looks like this. Okay. And if, if snap is on, it will snap the grid to the currently used subtools of the scene. If I press center, it will center to the center of the scene, to the zero position. All grids will be centered to zero. So you can use this to your advantage on how you would like to see the grid. And I can press view all grids to go back to the grid that was currently selected on the floor view. So even if I have my floor off and I press view all grids, it will turn my floor on and show me all grids. And if I unpress view all grids, it go back to whatever I wanted, wherever I had it before. Now let's talk about measurements. And as you can see, feet and inches have been removed. That's because uh, the tiles for ZBrush can only be an integer, which means it can only be a whole number. And certain grid sizes would have the need for fractional numbers in the tiles, which means feet and inches would never work within ZBrush for certain grid sizes. But centimeters and millimeters does work because there's 10 millimeters in each centimeter. Now, this is the visibility grid. So this is how you see the grid. And if you go over 10, millimeter will be turned off because, for example, a grid size of 10 would need 100 tiles and 100 tiles is the maximum. So if you go over 10, millimeters will be turned off. Still, you can still nudge and snap by millimeters, even though you cannot see the millimeters on your grid. So if I go back to a front view with some zoom here, Perhaps the top view, you can see better this grid. And in your draw tab, you can push up the frame opacity so you can see the grid better. So basically the maximum grid size for using millimeters would be 10. So I press millimeters. Now I can see the millimeters here. If I go over 10, those millimeters will be gone. If you have millimeters pressed and you go over 10, you get this message when using millimeters, the maximum grid size is 10, reverting back to centimeters. So it gives you the grid size that you asked for, but in centimeters, not in millimeters. Now, like I said, you can still nudge by millimeters. And before I start talking about all these settings, we here have the nudge settings for centimeters and millimeters. And we also have a slider for units. Now, I can still nudge by millimeters and I want to go back to my cube which will give me a better example. So if I select that and I press my top view with subtool focus, I can see what's happening. Now, I have grid nudge selected and if I press this middle button here, it will snap my subtool to the closest grid position. So it works a bit like auto grid snap as you've seen in the previous video. This has the same functionality as a previous version, auto grid snap. If I press auto grid snap and I move my tool, it will snap to the closest grid position. So I have centimeters 
in my grid nudge, I have centimeters selected. So if I move, I'm moving by a centimeter here, as you can see. I can also move by millimeters, even though I cannot see my millimeters because my grid size is bigger than 10, but I can still move by millimeters. And then I have this option here, which is the percentage of the selected currently selected unit. So if I press centimeters and I put a percentage of 0.5, which is half a unit, so half a centimeter, and I move my, and I nudge my subtool, I'm moving by half a centimeter, and I can go up to 10 centimeters maximum. So I can say two centimeters, so two units of a centimeter is two centimeters, and that will move two centimeters instead of one centimeter. And the same goes for millimeters. If I want to move by five millimeters, there we go, that's five millimeters. Let's talk a bit about, about these buttons here. Now, these buttons are relative to the currently selected view. So I'm in the top view and I can nudge my tool like that. Up, down, left, right. So you, in this version, you don't have to worry about in which axis you are nudging your tool. You simply select a view, and then this is correspondent to that view. So it's an easier way to nudge your subtools. And again, you can nudge all visible tool subtools. And remember, you have this undo button. We can undo that operation. Now let's go over these six options. Before we get to the tool nudge and tool scale, let's look at these options, these four grid options up here. Now we've been using grid nudge and these nudges the subtool by one grid unit, which is currently selected to a centimeter and you can change by uh, how much centimeters you use by this unit's slider. So for example, if my subtool it's not the size of the grid, and I use grid nudge, this will still nudge the center of the subtool to the closest grid position. Now let's look at edge snap. And as you can see, you have some more options when you use edge snap. So edge snap is gonna snap an edge to the grid, to the closest grid position. So for example, if I press this button here, it will snap the top edge to this closest grid position. I can go back to draw mode, press this, it snaps that edge to that grid position. I can press Control Z and do that. I can press also press this button and it will snap to these two edges here, which would be the same thing as pressing this one and this one. And I can also snap to the closest edge down. So my top edge to this grid position right there. Same thing using this button. It snaps to these two edges of the grid, these two edges to the grid. Much like scale snap, edge snap, it's only meant to snap an edge. It's not meant to keep pressing this button and trying to go to the next edge. If you need to do that, you go back to grid nudge. And now every time you nudge, it's still snapped to that edge, as you can see, still snapped to that grid. Scale snap, it will scale your subtool to the closest grid position. So if I go up, so this means that I'm controlling the top edge, which is this edge up here. If I go up, it will scale to the next grid position right there. If I go left, it will scale to that grid position. And same thing if I go down, it will scale to this closest grid position. So it's pretty straightforward how to use this functionality. I can scale there, scale there, and now it's snapped to the grid. And once it's snapped to the grid, I can go back to grid nudge and grid scale. And then nudging by a centimeter here, and it can also go to grid scale. Now in grid scale, this middle button has a different functionality, obviously. So if I press it, it will scale up, if I press this one, it will scale down. I can scale like this, and I can go back using these buttons. Scale up, scale down, scale down once more, 
scale up and that's how that works now you also have these go to and mask mask center and if you see when I press move and I scale up that goes straight to the unmask mask center you might not want that to happen so if you turn that off you can scale without going to the unmask mask center that also works for the nudging and all the other snapping options so edge snap scale snap is just a snap it's just a snap the edge subtool to the grid or to scale snap an edge to the grid and grid nudge grid scale is to scale by a unit selected here or nudge by a unit that is selected down here now let's look at tool nudge and tool scale these nudges or scales your tool relative to a set driver so you set a subtool as the driver and then you can scale or nudge the other subtools or itself by that size so I don't even need to press this button if I'm just having one subtool selected I can start nudging by half its size because half its size is currently selected I can nudge by a quarter of its size right there and the center button will snap a subtool to the closest grid position again it's the same thing as auto grid snap so if I'm not there and I press this it will nudge it to the grid and as you can see just like the alignment it will say it will give me a little feedback here and say what subtool is currently the nudge driver so if I bring another subtool here let's bring up the cone and I'm just gonna turn go back to draw mode I'll select that cone and make that my nudge driver so now that cone is my nudge driver so if I say move this subtool which is a selected subtool move it by one unit and that's the size of the cone I start nudging it nudges by the size of the cone and that's the size of the cone right there two units two grid units in this case and I can also go by a quarter of the size now as you can see a new slider has been added and that's the nudge amount and the nudge amount one would be a hundred percent of the size of the the nudge driver half would be 50 percent and a quarter would be 25 percent so you can control this using this slider and give the exact measurements that you want you can say by 15 percent that will change as you change these values here as well and you also have, like any other of these options you also have this option of doing this to all visible subtools or all subtools and then the undo option now in this version we also have tool scale and you can scale one subtool by the size of another subtool so I'm just gonna grid nudge this up here make sure place that in the center there and if I go to to sub to tool scale my nudge driver is that cone and let's say I want to change something about he this guy and I want to go by off the size of that so uh, as that driver there so if I go off the size I can scale it down there scale it down there and now it's exactly the same width looking from the left the same width as that driver I can go to front view I just hide the other stuff here front view I can go grid nudge nudge this guy to there for example if I want to snap this there I can go to scale snap and so that I can scale this down and I can do that and that so you can see you can do a lot of things with this plugin for exact measurements this is a great plugin to use now also rotation has been introduced and here you have the rotate on the X Y or Z axis and that's why the color is here now a easy way to rotate is by using the views so right now I'm in the front view you can see that the grid is blue which means the rotation is the blue so I can go forward backwards and you have the rotation down here the rotation settings 
So 15 degrees, 45, 90 degrees, 145, eight, and 180 degrees, which you can actually change using this slider. So if you need a different setting than these presets here, you can actually change the amount of rotation here from zero to one, 180. When you press this, this goes, the slider goes back to wherever rotation you got there. And you can rotate everything in your scene, front view, and I want to actually see everything else here. And I'll just uh, readjust the placement of this stuff so, so that I can see everything here. And might as well come here to grid scale and make that cube like that. So it's easier to see. And now also the selected visible and all is also applicable to the rotation tab. So let's say I want my visible subtools all to rotate by 45 degrees. I press this, they all rotate by 45 degrees as in a local position. So it's all local and I press undo, it goes back to what it was. You can also use one and the other to make them go back. You also have a um, grid center rotation. This will rotate your tools around the center of the grid. And the center of the grid is exactly where I have my mouse, my cursor right now. So if I press this grid center rotation and I rotate, then they will all rotate around the center of the grid. You can press undo here and they go back. So going back to these views, if I go to a top view, you can see that the background is green, which means I can use this green and they will all rotate to the center of the grid. And the center of the grid right now, it's around here. So press and do. Okay, so pretty straight, straightforward. So I believe I pretty much covered everything about this new version. And for example, now you had this project, you had the, all these settings, uh, the nudge driver set also. And now you could come to the settings tab and save a file, save your project file, and then save a file with in the same place as your project file. Whenever you reopen that file, that project file, you could come here and say load file and all these settings would come up as you see here. So all the tabs would open up and you come exactly to this position. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel because uh, I'm planning on doing some videos showing real world examples of where how, and how you can use the Mad Pony tool bag and some of my other plugins to improve your workflow. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.